Hey guys, I got another unboxing and a review video here for you today. Today we are going to be unboxing Sony's newest console of the 8th generation. It is the PlayStation 4. <laughs> I just got an Xbox One recently and I just got this for Christmas too. So yeah, I have currently all all three uh eighth generation consoles. We I did get pick I did pick up the Uncharted the Nathan Drake collection version of this uh console. This is the PS4. And I got a couple games for it for Christmas too. I got I'll go ahead and show you. I got Fallout 4, Destiny, The Taken Tank King, Assassin's Creed Unity, Bloodborne, and Little Big Planet 3. So I got a, a few games for Christmas for that, but we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this and I'm going to go give you guys a little bit of a review as well. So I'll see you guys in the unboxing. Alright guys. We are going to go ahead and unbox this console right here. <laughs> now, we're going to go ahead and just take my pocket knife right here, and I'm going to go ahead and just break the seal. Like so. Okay. And then we're going to go lift the flap here. I want to see what the console... I've seen what the console lo looks like, and I know everybody in my grandma has one now. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and just... Oh! Look at that. Box it just says PlayStation 4. <laughs> so let's go ahead and undo the flap here. Alright, so I'll undo all this here. Holy crap, this console is a lot slimmer than I thought it was going to be. Okay, got the console and everything else. Got I got everything else in here. ahead and open the other flap because it looks like there's something else in there. I think I know what it is. Yeah, I knew what it is. It was a controller. I'm going to cord for it. Okay. Okay. I'm going to wrap the game with something that I didn't think I was going to come with. Let's go ahead and get that out of here. Ugh, there we go. Okay, so the thing that I didn't think that <laughs> was going to be in here and it kind of slipped out of its bag but this right here, if we take a look here, um, this is, it looks like from the looks of it, it looks like a Bluetooth. <laughs> it comes with its own Bluetooth, it's like an earbud and stuff like that. I didn't know it came with that. I don't know what purpose that has for it, I'm going to have to look this up later after I uh, do research for the console for the review, but I didn't, I didn't know what that was. But we got power cord that goes straight into your outlet and stuff like that. This looks like a charge kit, a charge cable for your uh, your controller. An HDMI cable because that's what this generation of consoles runs on. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and take this out real quick. This is the PlayStation 4 controller. This controller looks a lot different than the other PlayStation controllers. The other PlayStation controllers always had this similar design and everything. This console is actually a different with the controller. It's got a touch screen in the middle and everything, if you look up here. Yeah, it has a touch screen and everything. And you touch it and you, you know, you, I don't know what that does, but I'm going to have to, like I said, I don't know too much about the PlayStation 4. I kind of was out of the know for the longest time, but... It looks like here I got, this came with it, but it comes with the Uncharted 4 multiplayer beta. It's like an invite to the beta itself. I'm going to have to check that out. I haven't really played. Uncharted's like one of my favorite series, but I don't play the multiplayer as much as everybody else does. And also it comes with a downloadable code for Uncharted the Nathan Drake collection, which <laughs> I'm going to have to download later. But it comes with its own manual. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this. Very slim manual for a console. Usually consoles have really huge manuals. Yeah. It kind of fooled me a little bit because I thought it was all a console. No, it's just little pamphlets and everything. It just says, Welcome to the world of PlayStation. And it's all in different languages. This is the actual manual for the console. 
<laughs> it's really thin. <laughs> I didn't think that... I guess there's not much to say about the console, honestly. It didn't need it. And it says, discover more from PlayStation Network. I think this is... Oh, this is a free subscription for PlayStation Plus uh, for 14 days. And it comes with a 20% coupon off of anything in the store. As a code here for 25 or 20 20 off any item in the PlayStation Store from the looks of it, and it has a uh, Spotify on it. So you can have if you have a Spotify account, you can listen to it on your PlayStation 4. Now, <laughs> enough with all the other stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look at the console itself. Okay, and the styrofoam and everything. Oh, well, that's what the PlayStation 4 looks like. <laughs> it looks like a I don't know how to describe the shape of it. It's kind of slanted in some ways. It's a very different design than the other consoles. <laughs> it's very slanted. <laughs> it makes like a hexa, uh, a pentagram shape a little bit. That's the console itself. Uh, I think the USB, the USB uh, slots are right here. And the disk drive is right here in front of the PlayStation and this is where you're gonna get all your HDMI outputs and everything and put your controller uh, your power supply in there it has an Ethernet cable and has an auxiliary outlet and everything but yeah that's the PlayStation 4 but yeah guys that was PlayStation 4 I'm gonna go ahead and I'll see you guys when we do a review of the console. Alright guys, we're moving on to the review portion of the PlayStation 4. Now, the PlayStation 4 is obviously PlayStation's 8th generation console. And it's honestly a really... I, I really like this console from the, <laughs> from the few minutes I've played of it so far. But... Um, as soon as you boot up the system, it's going to go ahead and, you know, have this the Sony logo for the first time. And it's going to go through the startup process where it's going to ask you to connect your PlayStation 4 controller to the console using the, the USB cord that was provided with the console. And it's going to ask you to hit the PlayStation Home button to kind of synchronize the, the controller. Then it's going to go through the startup process where you're going to have to select your your uh your language that you you speak and all this other stuff select your time zone and select your internet pro uh, internet uh connection so that way it can connect to the internet and as soon as you do that then you'll go in straight into the the start menu the home menu and everything now the home menu has two has two tiers essentially it has uh two lines that it'll that you'll mostly be using in when you're on the screen. The first line is kind of like your libraries. It has all your games and your apps and your options and whatnot. And that's pretty much what you're going to be using most of the time. But if you push up on the D-pad, it'll go to your PlayStation Network stuff, like your profile, your friends list, your party list, your community list, and your, you know, your Bluetooth headset and your trophies, and then notifications for the console itself whenever a game is down, done downloading and whatnot. But... As soon as you finish that, you're going to create a user. As soon as you start the as soon as you finish the startup menu, you're going to create a user. And if you want to connect to this to PSN, you're going to have to connect it using your PSN ID. Now, like the Xbox does with the 360, Xbox 1 does with the 360, PlayStation can connect your profile that you made on your PS3 or your PSP and connect it with your PlayStation 4 too. So, all, you, all your stuff PlayStation-wise, whether it be pl play PSP, PS3, PlayStation Vita, PlayStation TV, and PlayStation 4 can all be accounted for on this one PSN profile that you made. And uh, that's pretty much, that's really convenient. It's just like the Xbox's uh, gamer tag, in a sense, and I really like that. And that, that, that kind of micromanages a lot of stuff that you've done over the over over the past uh, few years you've done with PlayStation. Now, whenever you connect it to to the account, you're going to have to use your 
email and your and your password to sign into PSN. As soon as you do that, you are synced up with a PlayStation 4, and you'll be able to play your games and get your trophies and stuff like that. Now, one thing about the PlayStation controller I kind of want to get into real quick, and you probably saw this a little bit, is there's a touch screen on the PlayStation 4 controller, and you can use that to <laughs> hover the cursor on the keypad whenever you're putting in, like, uh, letters and numbers and stuff like that. You can hover it over that using the touchpad on the controller, and I thought that was really neat. As soon as I saw, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, that looks so cool. <laughs> But that's pretty much the whole startup portion of the PlayStation 4. Now, another thing that they do in the, play, in the startup is they're going to ask you about a PlayStation camera. A PlayStation camera is an uh, accessory that you can add on to your PlayStation that allows you to uh, do motion sensing. It's a motion sensing accessory for the PlayStation 4. It, has, it allows you to take pictures and have the PlayStation camera for most games that require it. So that's pretty much that in a nutshell. But as for the console itself, the PlayStation 4 uh, will allow you to play pretty much anything. It plays, you know, your PlayStation 4 games. And well, it shouldn't say anything, but play it allows you to play PlayStation 4 games, all Blu-ray discs, um, like movies and stuff like that, and DVD playback. But it does not allow you to play CDs, unfortunately. I don't know why PlayStation didn't have that feature in, but I think what they really want to do is for you to sign up for Spotify. Spotify is a music app that it, that PlayStation is kind of partnered with to have an app on the PlayStation. So you can go ahead and download that and you have your music right there. I don't know why you aren't allowed to put regular CDs in, but I won't question it. <laughs> that That is what it is. Now... Uh, you can actually use a lot of a lot of uh, the PlayStation 4 has a lot of features. Honestly, one of the biggest ones I've seen most that they try to advertise most is is a uh, remote play, which is something that has it's pretty much a conglomeration of using your Vita and your PlayStation 4. What the remote play allows you to do is allows you to stream to your PlayStation Vita, your PlayStation 4 games on the go whenever you're in the house and stuff like that. It allows your your uh, PlayStation 4 to stream to your Vita and your PlayStation TV and stuff like that. I mentioned this in my PlayStation TV review that uh, remote play is a big thing that allows you to pretty much play your PlayStation 4 if your PlayStation 4 is in the living room and you want to play it in your bedroom. So that allows you to do that. It's just, it's kind of just allows you to play games on a second screen. That's pretty much what that is. Now, the DualShock 4 controller will includes a share button, which allows you to share screenshots, share movie, uh, video clips, and stuff like that to social media sites like Facebook, Daily Motion, Twitter, and YouTube, and it allows you to put. Uh, the clip on a USB flash drive and allow you to upload it yourself and stuff like that. But the PlayStation also has has a uh, live broadcasting. It says it allows you to do live broadcasting via uh, UStream, YouTube Gaming, Twitch, all that other stuff. It allows uh, allows you to do that using one of the apps in the PlayStation on the PlayStation 4. It allows you to do that. But another feature that the PlayStation 4 has is SharePlay. SharePlay allows you to uh, let an, uh, invite a friend to, uh, to join you in a play session, even if they don't own a game on, on of the, that, that copy of the game. Uh, this kind of reminds me of the, the download play the DS had. What it essentially does is essentially the player can actually go ahead and join in on a uh, game that you have, even if they don't have it. So you'll be able to play the game cooperatively, cooperatively online by going ahead and just doing this feature. And I really like that feature because the DS had that, and it's really good, good uh, concept in games like that. And the 3DS even has that too, in a sense. It allows, like I, allows me to play games with other people even if I don't have the game, and I just really like that.
PlayStation Network is Sony's online community, which allows you to, you know, do social gatherings with your friends online. You know, you can play games with them, you can share stuff with them, you can, you know, rack up your uh, trophies and stuff like that, and you'll be able to purchase things on the PlayStation Store. Now, PSN, you have to sign in with a PSN account. If you don't have one, you're going to have to make one using your email using your email, and setting up, you know, a password and whatnot. As soon as you do that, you have to make a PSN profile ID, and then it has to be pretty much the same. It has to be your u- unique profile name that no one else has. But PlayStation 4 does something that's different. They allow you to show yourself with your full name. So if your friends don't know what your PlayStation ID is, they can search you up by your full name and then they'll, they'll find your PlayStation uh, ID. And I really do like that feature. That's really neat. Now, the, on PlayStation Network, you'll be able to do a lot of things online, like buy games and play games online with people and, you know, partake in open betas and stuff like that for online multiplayer games. But... Something that was changed differently in this generation with PlayStation consoles is on the PlayStation 3, playing online multiplayer games was free. It was always free. You can go ahead and do that. But this generation with the PlayStation 4, in order to uh, partake in any online multiplayer action on any of your games, you have to purchase PlayStation Plus, which is PlayStation's subscription-based program. PlayStation Plus it not only allows you to play online, but it also has other diff- uh, other benefits as well. Uh, you can also get free games every month with PlayStation Plus, as well as get a bunch of deals on PlayStation Plus with certain discounts on games. If a game goes on sale, PlayStation Plus members will get it for a reduced cost, and sometimes they will get it for free, and it's just it's really nice. The thing is, though, if you do get free games with PlayStation Plus, you have to... If you do get it and you don't renew your your subscription base with PlayStation Plus, you do not have access to the free game that you downloaded using PlayStation Plus. You have to have PlayStation Plus in order to keep the game. So, just re- keep that in mind whenever you get free games from PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Plus memberships can range from... I think about ten dollars per a month and thirty dollars for three months and about and I know it's like sixty bucks for a year. So keep that in mind if you want to play online games, you have to get PlayStation Plus on the PlayStation Four. On the PlayStation Three, it's still free, but on the PlayStation Four, it's it's you have to have this service. The PlayStation Four doesn't really have backwards compatibility. It has other ways of accommodating this, for instance. It has a service called PlayStation Now, which allows you to... It's it's pretty much a rental service for users to be able to play games that were from previous generations of the consoles. Like, you can play pretty much a lot of PlayStation 3 games... For free by using this cloud streaming service that allow it's pretty much a rental service. It's like Redbox, but they stream the games to you, and you'll be able to play most of your PS3, a lot of PS3 games through the service. Now, this service you get a seven seven day free trial when you start up, but after that you have to pay 20, 20 bucks a month, I think, if I could, if I recall. You can you have to pay twenty dollars a month in order to be able to stream games to your console and play them all there. Now, this is kind of a, in a way, a ripoff to me at least because, you well, know, I have a lot of PS3 games. I don't really, I'm the type of person I go ahead and I go and buy a game and everything, and I just wanted to have my console play all my games at once. Uh, you know, I have a, I'd rather have a couple consoles hooked up at once rather than 50 million so backwards compatibility is kind of a big thing to me and i understand the playstation 4 can't you know doesn't have the same hardware as ps3 or ps2 or ps1 but they'd be able to have some sort of backwards compatibility i kind of wish it did but you know for them making up for it this makes sense 
But I just wish that, <laughs> in my honest opinion, I just wish that you there was some way you could play a game that you have a game you own, you put a disc in the console itself, it registers it, and it's like free on PlayStation, PlayStation Now in order to play it. But I can also understand why this is so kind of a neat service because this will be able to allow you to... It's kind of like Netflix in a way. You can play any game you want for $20 a month on the on their service. So in a way, it's kind of a win. And I kind of like this service. It's really... It's kind of neat. But it's just for backwards compatibility, using this as backwards compatibility, just raise an eyebrow a little bit. But eh, it's whatever. But the PlayStation... Uh, Four has uh, also a PS2 emulator in a sense. They just recently announced uh, some sort of PlayStation update that had a PS2 emulator in integrated in it, and you'll be able to play PS2 games on it. Thing is, though, it's not as wonderful as you probably think it is. The PS2 emulator <laughs> is only downloadable. And the only way you can get it is by downloading games off the PlayStation Store. Uh, <laughs> so, in essence, you can't pop in a PS2 disc in PlayStation 4 in order to play your PS2 games that you have. If you have a big library of PS2 games, you can't play them on your PS4, even though PlayStation 4 has this emulator. But you have to go to the store instead and buy them again. I'm not really a big fan of this. Uh, I just wish that they kind of, in a sense, not made it so I didn't have to buy the same game again. And I know it's upscaled to 1080p, and I know it has trophy support, but honestly, when I have the game, I don't want to buy it again. But that's just me, honestly. Uh, when it comes to backwards compatibility, the PlayStation, in some essence, has it. In some essence, it doesn't have it. But for the PlayStation 4, it has a variety of games it can play uh, just for the PlayStation 4 games. The PlayStation 4 games are coming out frequently, and they have really good graphics and stuff like that. Uh, one exclusive I picked up in particular was Bloodborne, and I really like that game. It's a game from From Software, and it's a really good, really good hard Souls game, and I, and it's only available on PlayStation 4, so PlayStation 4 is getting a lot of exclusive as well, so you might want to pick up a, pick up a PS4 if you're look if you're really into games like Uncharted, if you're into games like Little Big Planet, if you're into games like God of War, you might want to pick it up. And I know for a fact that there's some multi-plat games that are only going to be exclusive on PlayStation 4. I know that Street Fighter V is going to be exclusive on PS4, so if you if you want to pick it up, it's also on PC, but that's another thing. It's, it's on PS4 and PC, but it, for console-wise, PS4 is the way to go if you want to get floor, Street Fighter V. And I know PlayStation's getting a lot of exclusives on multi-plats, so... Sometimes I think it's just better to get a PlayStation 4 for that reason alone. I noticed a lot of multiplats doing that, but that's just me. <laughs> so, but anyways, guys, that is the PlayStation 4, and I really like this console. Now, the only minor complaint I have about it is the fact that it's not really that good with backwards compatibility. It's, I just feel like it's a bass backwards way of doing it. But, but other than that, everything else is just a wonderful. This is a wonderful piece of hardware, and I really like it. So, if you are in the mood of pick picking up a game and you want to play games like Uncharted, God of War, and Little Big Planet, Little Big Planet, you might want to pick up a PlayStation 4. It's a it's a really good console, and it's really I I had a lot of fun with it. But anyways, guys, I hope I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next video I do. Take care, everybody.